A call to order the regular school board meeting on Monday, September 12th, 2022 for Valley City Schools. Uh, let's rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, time for roll call. Um, Present in chambers, myself, Vice President Megan Dunderson. Obviously, I will be running this meeting due to an absent, absence of our president. Other members in chambers currently are um, Board Clerk Carrie Wade, uh, Treasurer Jamie Winchester, and Board Member Kathleen Todd. Absent and excused are President Anna Hinkle and Board Members Joe Prax and Scott McCombie. For the review of the minutes, the minutes will stand unless there are any changes requested. Betty? Uh, I gave uh, Shannon a couple of suggestions this afternoon. Um, nothing major. I think the main thing that it, there's one tiny typo, but also to give the sense of the meeting that uh, having listened to it, uh, that you didn't really want to go on with uh, offering three year old preschool. Uh, that's the sense I, I got out of listening to you folks uh, having not been there. Thank you. Any others? Okay, I think that is friendly enough to stand then. Public comment on non agenda items. Just as a reminder, there is to be no discussion of personnel. Anybody have comments on non agenda? Okay, seeing none. We will move into reports and introductions. First, the superintendent report. All right, thank you, Mr. President Gunderson. Uh, can you raise up this desk? <laughs> there we go. All right, uh, Tim Bauer, superintendent, thank you very much. For superintendent report, uh, start like start with goals. And um, there was a discussion about putting together a timeline of the goals that I presented and objectives. I just want to give the board an update on that. We're collaborating with the building administrators on their building goals. They have been um, that they should be completed by the end of this week. Then we will come together and then just collaborate the building goals with the district with board goals that have been to me and then we'll collaborate on a timeline to present to the board shortly so you can expect that on the next meeting for um, um we're working towards alignment i've uh, been collaborating with the administrative team we're beginning the evaluative pro process for professional development and what tools to use you can the board can also expect a am i close enough here or <laughs> oh sorry uh board can expect proposals on vertical alignment uh, software programs in the near future we're just we're just researching them, testing them out and pricing them out and checking references essentially on them just to make sure they're fully vetted before we move forward. Uh, but working for with principals on alignment curriculum, we've already begun the process. Uh, the board can expect formal timelines and, and um, projections on that in the, probably by the next meeting. So uh, uh, there's uh, professional development. Oh, I'm sorry. We've so there have been a lot of updates just in process that, that the district's been in just absence and many more of these I'm sure will come up. We're kind of addressing them as they arise. But just to give you an idea, and these are in the packets. Um, working on professional development request form, that's one that we've put in. But the just rationale behind this is twofold. One, um, to make sure that all professional development is in line with building and district goals. And two, to get a clear assessment on exactly how much we're spending, what, and to do a evaluative process on um, how effective our money is spent in professional development. So, uh, then, so just some other systems that have been put into place, the board should be aware of, are uh, uh, just formalizing hiring process, implementing checklists um, for new hires for classified and certified, 
um, substitute checklist for hiring and onboarding uh, in plan of improvements for classified and certified. And then Shelby has been working on, on the medical side is of um, concussion protocols, reporting protocols, um, how we, we do incident reports and in the nurse's handbook, she's updating also. So you're just going to see a lot, just a lot more, not too exciting, but to things that need to be done to put in process to clean things up. So I'm excited about putting those in. Uh, some updates on staff engagement, community outreach. Um, I've, I've been, for, I've hit the high school and the middle school so far on Friday mornings, just providing coffee and refreshments to get to know the staff and just to, to build that collaboration and show my face so it's not just a, a guy in the district office. And that's been going very well. I think it's just fun to, who doesn't like coffee and donuts, right? <laughs> but, but it's been fun just to chat and get to know the staff. It's been a a lot of fun. And then uh, the elementary school will be this Friday, so mornings. Uh, and then on the 14th, you know, on Wednesday, I'm hosting a just a community chat. I'm sure you're aware of just an um, open forum. Hey, get to know me. Any questions you might have, any concerns, just an informal, look, let's talk. Uh, so I'm excited for that. And then on the, the Saturday, I will be doing substitute recruitment training um, where we're formal bringing as many people in as we can for uh, to recruit substitute teachers so that's and then um, but um, busing <laughs> we've, we've had a couple of disruptions with busing but comparatively speaking around the state where i'm i'm doing bath backflips to be honest with you uh, we are working out the kinks just some route changes and but uh, i'm overall i'm very pleased um, we're, we're still fine tuning a couple things, primarily at the elementary school, but those should be cleaned up in the next day or two. So. Uh, and then uh, student engagement. <laughs> I, was, I had the wonderful pleasure of being invited to go to the eighth grade uh, Kennecott mine field trip. And um, it's just that out of all of the 13 and 14 year olds, I was the one who chose to most poorly on footwear. Um, <laughs> I suffered dearly, uh, my feet did, but it was so much fun getting to know the students and just seeing them in a different light. And I mean, they put in some serious miles and I'd just like to thank Ann Norris for organizing it and the volunteers, some, a couple of board members were there also, uh, board member Wade and board member McCombie. And it was just, it was just a, so nice to see staff and students and it, see them in a different setting, a different light. It was, it, I was impressed by the group overall. Uh, um, and updates on my travel. Um, I was originally uh, scheduled to be at Homer for superintendent conference. For uh, I have canceled that. I, just looking over the itinerary, I don't see a lot of benefit to Valdez and me going and the cost and getting to Homer and the travel is, uh, more than I'm willing to bear. So I'll be staying home for that and just getting the updates, the notes from the conference. There's nothing really pressing that's uh, for this conference that I, I feel would be detrimental if I'm missing the conference. So just be aware of that, if, that I've withdrawn from that conference. And I just want to thank the board uh, for all your support. And I'm grateful to be here in Valdez. Uh, we've done a lot in a short amount of time. And it's not all visible and evident, you know, but just uh, putting in new process, processes and working together and constantly talking about goals, uh, working with, with administrators every week, we I meet with them and we're going over goals. So there's not, they're not just, I don't want the board to have any impression that we set goals and then they're sitting on a shelf somewhere, they're visited daily. Um, and when you see the timeline put together, it, it's, I think you'll be impressed with, it might be ambitious, but I, I think you'll be impressed with where we're going and what the plans are. So, that's, uh, and then for, I would like to present, if you could, uh, Jen, if you could bring up the, uh oh, what, oh, do you? Oh, so, uh, we're just going to do a quick presentation on an overview of the accreditation report, that's right, and then how we are addressing those things. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight there are 
it's largely positive. There are a few areas you need attention. They're color coded. I think you saw it in the board report. I'm just going to address how, how we're. Did we not get the board more? <laughs> I'm sorry. I, my mic wasn't uh, on to the, uh, the cognitive report did not make it to the board packet. I, will, I apologize. Um, so let's let's uh, I don't know what the, are we Chan, are we able to it's up there? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> the, let's, Oh, no, bear, bear with us if we, we can't get this up, I'll just paraphrase, <laughs> summarize this. Uh, we, <laughs> so, all right. All right. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So the so what these are color coded. So red is insufficient. And yet those are the two categories that we're going to just look at: green and improving and impacting. You can uh, now make sure the board has covered. But we're going to just I want to do an overview and talk about where, how we're addressing the insufficiencies. Uh, so at 1.1, 1, 1. 1, um, the system commits to a purpose uh, statement that defines beliefs about teaching and learning, including the expectations to learners. Uh, quite simply, this is a lack of a strategic plan, a current strategic plan. It's uh, with the goals for the building and district goals. It, what I'm hoping is like working, using those to collaborate with the board on having the guide us towards a strategic plan, which we can do in a short time. But I do want to remind the board that we we are bound to ha have a strategic plan by statute. So um, that is what item 1.1 1 .1 is. 1.2 is as stakeholders collect the evidence to make adequate to ensure that the strategic purpose and the desired outcome. Uh, this is looking at the goals that you can capture the building goals and looking like that. And 1.3. Sorry, the system engages in a continuous improvement process that produces evidence, including measurable results, improving student learning and professional practice. And uh, it's Matt, when we get the vertical alignment tool and we match those up against map testing, we can start collaborating, cross-checking those, that will satisfy us, which we're in the process of. So all of these, um, which are deemed insufficient by the accreditation, uh, we are actively working towards and we'll have results for shortly. And then, so item 2.12 is, uh, the system implements a process to continuously assess its programs and organize conditions to improve student learning. And that is a vertical alignment tool, again, map scores and curriculum, evaluate, curriculum evaluations, which we're actively working on. Uh, and then the final one that uh, was deemed it's, or inadequate rather is 3.3, uh, which is, the system provides induction, mentoring, and coaching programs and ensure all staff members have the knowledge and skills to improve student performance and organizational effectiveness. Um, and this, a lot of this is in buildings where we're identifying the uh, needs for professional development, but additionally, this ties into a proposal tonight for additional staff is to get principals back to being educational leaders in the buildings and focusing on on the goals and objectives. And so as much as we can take off the plate of administrators that is not geared towards the goals, it's, I'm, I'm actively going to support. Um, then this will help us uh, just really focus on putting together 
system of mentoring and coaching and identifying the professional development needs and spending more time on that. So, um, that, are there, with that, are, and that concludes my report. Any questions from the board? Are the numbers there, are they ratings from like one to five from each of the review board? That you see what I'm like, the EN, IM, the numerical scores, if that's what they are in each standard? Uh, yes. I they indicate so. like yes. one is the lowest and five is the highest rating possible mm -hmm. or? Uh, correct. So if we go down here, four. we have like 3.5 that's impacting, which is above. They're doing very well, and we have four and three, so five would be. Uh, yeah, I'm not saying it was four. I'm not sure. Yeah. So those would have been the scores from each of the reviewing. Correct. Okay. That's what I'm yeah. That's what I'm guessing, but I don't know that. Um, is that a mullet? I think no. Oh, I, okay. I, I apologize. Nope. I'll have Director to, Reese. Yep. I will have to look at the the guide, but like the EN. I am so the I am is implementing, and so it's all about the they're different, they're not people's um initials. And at the moment, I don't remember which one, but it's it's not their initials, okay? It's just different. Oh, here we go, right there engagement, implementation, their their elements. sustainability, and embeddedness. That's what those I are. See. Is Thanks. this a report that is public and that it can be? put on our website or is it something that is more internal? Yes, yeah, so of what I have asked Shannon to do is after this board meeting to post it on our website. Yeah. Any further questions from the board about this or anything else that Superintendent Bauer discussed? Okay, seeing none. Okay, thank you very much. Move on to Director Reese, Technology and Assessment Report. Melissa Reeves, Director of Technology and Innovation. So my report this evening, a few parts, um, just a technology update, going along with some of those goals that Superintendent Bauer talked about. One of my goals is to make sure that my people get trained, my technologists get trained in things. And so I've had a couple of technicians participate in some JAMP training in July and August, and then they'll do more training in October. I'm going out to a JAMP, and JAMP is a program we use to manage all the Apple devices, which is 90% of our devices. So it's a really important program that we use to manage technology for the district. And then um, in services, I just kind of recap on all those in services in August and then last Friday, all those went well and they were, a lot of it was, was coordinated by myself. So just kind of outlining that. And then um, one of my big goals this year is to develop a balanced assessment system with all of the, the staff. And so the state is providing training for that. And so I'm participating in that and then relaying information onto the staff. And a really exciting part of that is being able to offer a one credit class through Prince William Sound College to anyone, all the staff who want to take advantage of that. And the college is offering that for free for the staff, which is really a great benefit. It's been a while since we've been able to do this. So it's really great to get back in the swing of offering credit to staff for their training. Questions? Thank you. All right. Uh, Dr. Reese, facilities report. <clears throat> Darren Reese, facilities director. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, it's a continuation of projects are not getting off the border, um, but we're continuing on the, the generation, the generator product that was supposed to be done last summer. Uh, we're getting closer. We're getting controls hooked into our system now. So we're, we're going to be able to control the generators through Maritime. So that, that's good. Um, <clears throat> the walk-in refers coolers. We're halfway there. We got the high schools up and running. Um, there, we're still doing some 
last minute uh, checks on the freezer. Uh, got problems with it, but we're working through those. The ones at the bus barn are, are been a little more stubborn, but we're working through it with the contractor. Um, what else would I? I honestly, I don't remember off the top of my head what all was on there. Um, flooring in at H&H uh, &H, phase one is complete. Um, phase two will be starting in set the summer of 24, because summer of 23 is slated for the exterior of the of Herman Hutchins. Uh, camera for the football field, we have a pole up. Um, we have been waiting for it not to be so soggy so we can trench, not make mush. Um, that's on hold until the weather cooperates a little bit more. Hopefully we'll dry out here soon. Any questions? questions from the board? Kathy? So do we have freezer capacity and whatever, or are we to borrow from Do we have freezer capacity and whatever, or do we have to borrow from fish processing plants or what? Currently, we're, we're borrowing from our uh, uh, supplier, and but we're what we're going to do is we're going to take the, the older freezer that was taken out of the bus barn and still at the bus barn. Uh, we're, we're wanting to hook it up for a temporary hookup so we can get it operational when we get our material in on at least in our own freezers. So, and that was initially what we were thinking, but then they were saying, no, we can get the get these hooked up in the bus barn soon. And no, they're not, they're, they run in complications. So, we we're getting with the contractor and uh, uh, Amber was saying that let's let's get them hooked up so we can get our material on our own property and that's good. Further questions? I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned the exterior envelope to the elementary. Yes. As of next summer project. Yes. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Will we see quotes? When do you expect to submit quotes for that? I would imagine if they're having to look on site and give quotes, they'll want to do that before the snow falls. Um, I think we were uh, anticipating of having the uh, city give the presentation to you this evening, but that right. did not work out. So That's we're right. having a meeting tomorrow to work over the details of that and a presentation will be coming your way because okay. uh, they want to get it on the ballot for a bond issue. Mm -hmm. So. And I understand that playground fill was ordered and that's the deal. In place. We put Perfect. it in place this morning. That's great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It was, <laughs> a, check it yeah, out. It was, it was a wet endeavor, but it's, I bet it's so. done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Karen. Um, have we heard anything from the city on high school? Are we going to, when those conversations are going to start or? You know, that's uh, uh, Nate, that I know he's what got to make a presentation to you on it. So, I'm letting him do that. Um, you know, I, I don't know when he's wanting to do that sooner than later. I hope uh, the information's out there. Um, that's a project that's, you know, it, it's still going to be a year or two years out, but they need to start moving on it quick. I don't know when exactly he was going to do this presentation for you. I can find out and I'll let you know. Yeah, I think if we can schedule it for next board meeting, if he's available on the 27th. Perfect. That's what on the work session schedule is mm -hmm. Nate for weeks from now. For the high school. Okay. Cool. Good. Okay. Yes. So Winchester. Um you kind of threw out there that the HHES envelope project is a potential bond issue. Is that <laughs> it, it, so that's a, a part it, of the it, Nate presentation? Yes, it, it, it's a city project. So I mean yeah. if they want to put it on the ballot on the ballot to be a bond issue. Um, that's, I mean, that kind of feels like something the school board should it. have some input on as well. Is this really what we want to focus on bonding or do we want to look at the high school? Just future mm -hmm. thoughts, I guess. Something to bring up that's, perhaps the next work session. We'll right. Having, yeah. yeah. And just, yeah. I, you know, and also I don't see it as an well, either or, um, I, this, this is both of them are going to be to the level that putting out the bond or long-term debt for the tax purposes of the city is is in their favor. It's in, yeah, their, it's favor. in their favor, but not property owners. So it's it's hard, it's a hard push to bond things when we're doing it in order to keep property taxes high. So 
I'd like to have further discussions on that. You're, that's not, I think that's a neat and city discussion that we need to have. Your concern being perhaps the fatigue on voters that if they Absolutely. voted this in, they might not vote in right. the high yeah, school that we, we need needed. to focus on what we really want if we're going to look into bonding things. Okay, we'll make a note of that. Um, any further questions? Okay, thank you, Director Reese. Yeah, thank you. Next, Director Holly, business report. Um, I just want to highlight a couple things on my report this time. On the second page, I have added a 20,000 foot view of the grants. Um, hopefully that helps answer any questions. Also, I put in there that the budget, the FY23 budget would be submitted in October. That is for salaries and benefits. That's what that amendment will be after the budget was amended or adopted after we did negotiations and we had talked about that we would do a budget amendment. Everybody has updated where they will land on the salary schedule. So it, it'll be good um, beginning of October. Also, I talked about the E-rate application. There are about four steps in the E-rate in the E-rate application. That is our internet that uh, we are federally subsidized on. Um, there is a category one and a category two. Category one is just our local internet and our connections between the school. There is a category two funding that we receive as well, but uh, that is for more uh, hardware stuff like our, our wireless stuff that's put in. We have done through that. And Melissa hasn't found anything. Well, I'm sure she's got a list of things to do, but we have nothing currently that we are planning a category two budget for. Um, normally those category two funds will, uh, they give us a designated amount and it is for about three years at a time. So um, also uh, the last thing we uh, are currently a little over on our expenditures. I think that is, completely due to the curriculum being spent out at the beginning of the year instead of at the end or not spending it out completely is what's driving that extra amount over. Questions from the board? Seeing none, thank you. Next, the Valley Eats High School report from Mr. John Berkeley. I do like this. Um, hi, John Berkeley, Valdez High School principal. Um, I apologize. I was on personal leave for a couple of days last week. My dad was in town. Uh, got to watch some volleyball games and so uh, chased some silvers. What few were out there, uh, but we did it. Um, but I did include my year in report that I had made mention of uh, back in August. Um, and so for the year end report, I focused on two major. Um, topics, the first one being our MAP scores. We can scroll down. For the MAP scores, looking at grades nine and 10, these are the students that we test. I wanted to look at how we were performing uh, in the spring as compared to where we started in the fall. But I also wanted to include information for what the national average was or the norm for the fall and the spring for each of the grade levels. For each of the sections or tests that where we actually went backwards, I highlighted in red. Um, as far as what happened during those times, uh, we tried incentives this, this spring uh, for our students, our ninth and 10th graders. Um, and we also tried utilizing our block schedule um, during that time when they were testing. Um, I would say the incentives were kind of a wash. Uh, some liked it, some didn't really uh, 
weren't too interested. And the block schedule, again, was kind of a wash. Sometimes it worked out really well for students who were taking uh, a longer time to finish the test. But if they didn't finish the test, then what it meant is the next day they were doubled up on a test, uh, finishing a test, and then having another long section of testing. And so there may have been some fatigue in some of those classes that may have contributed to the drop. Um, in my report, I, I noted that it's our MAP test, our spring MAP testing window is between uh, the state testing window and our finals week. So we actually have about a month and a half where we have state testing, MAP testing, and then finals. And so I'm sure fatigue and interest are, are is issues at that point, not to mention all the different things that are going on. We still we had a sizable track and field team, which is great. But it, you know, it does produce logistical issues when, you know, 95% of the, the meets are out of town. Um, and so this year, uh, just taking a look at that, we've shared this with the staff, or at least the spring scores. Um, you know, with with new staff members come new ideas. And so I just put it out there. What what have you done in the past? And so uh, what many of the teachers have done for this fall testing session is to say, well, you can take the map test or you can do an alternate assignment. But either one's going to be a grade in the grade book. Uh, and that pretty much the kids are like, I'm not doing the alternate assignment. I'll just take the test. And so that uh, we'll see how that goes. I looked at the freshmen They're They're right on track to where last year's freshmen were. Um, our testing numbers are actually higher than what they were in the past. And so we don't have as many opt-outs. They figure, well, I'm here, it's for a grade, I'll get it done. Uh, and so I didn't have any, um, I didn't receive any emails or phone calls for any opting out. Uh, we'll see how it goes through the year, uh, but for this testing session, it went pretty well. Um, and so we do have fall scores for grades nine and 10 uh, for this year. and. I'll plan to update this table at the end of this school year to see how, see how we're doing. Um, the second major topic, of course, was uh, the staff survey on the block schedule. And in previous uh, board reports, I've, I've alluded to what the staff is feeling about the block schedule. Uh, we had a number of staff that really enjoyed the block schedule, any of our hands-on, uh, type classes, our CTE classes, our art classes, science classes, um, culinary arts. They absolutely love the block schedule. They could take their time, they could get set up, they could actually start and make considerable project or progress on their projects. Uh, and some of the other core subject areas, I think, struggled a little bit. Uh, one of the things that we did uh, before implementing the block schedule was uh, create instructional pacing guides. Uh, one of the main concerns was we've never done a block schedule before. How do we ensure that what we've taught from August to May uh, in a seven period schedule will be the same as to what we do with a block schedule? We've never done it before. We don't have any historical documents to follow. So uh, teachers created a, um, an instructional pacing guide, which was matched to the adopted district calendar. And so they knew where the breaks and holidays were. Uh, they could take time to uh, line out their units, their projects, their assessments, uh, and get a better idea of where those things would fall and, and have something tangible in their hands that they could actually look at and plan, uh, not only long-term, but short-term as well. Uh, and we've done that again this year. And um, I think, um, with a lot of the comments that you see there, you know, there weren't a lot of surprises. Uh, advisory time was a concern. Um, this year, we still have our advisory time, but one of the advisory times periods is uh, we're implementing Character Strong, which is an SEL program, which I think is really needed, uh, considering what our, our staff and students have gone through. Right now, it's being very well received by our students. Uh, it's uh, I can go into more detail about that program in future meetings. 
Um, but we also reduced our advisory time to 30 minutes. And so I think that for from a teacher standpoint, that's a much more manageable amount of time um, than say 37 minutes, which is actually what it was last year. And so 30 minutes is something that I think teachers feel they can manage. Um, and the other part was our morning times. Um, right now our morning times this year seem to be doing a little better in terms of what students are using it for. Uh, last year, uh, we didn't start until 8.22 in the morning. So that was uh, having, you know, most of the kids in the building by 8, 8.05 and having that, what it turned into was downtime. Uh, and so it, it wasn't being used effectively. Uh, and so for the block days, they still start at 8.22. Uh, and for the non-block days, they start at 8.13. And so we, did, we shortened that time period. So the kids are there. They get into the classes that they need to, uh, and then the, we get into the day much quicker. Um, and of course, I think a lot of what uh, the struggles were related to with teachers who, who didn't want the block schedule. Uh, as I said before, most of our adopted programs are built for 50 minute class periods. The scope and sequence is laid out in a certain way that uh, is conducive to a seven period day or a six period day. Um, I think once we start doing more with curriculum and instruction, as opposed to just strictly looking at our adopted programs, our staff will begin to feel much more comfortable uh, working in a block schedule, looking more at some of those higher level skills, more of the application part of the subjects and topics that they're teaching during, during the school year. Um, and I think a lot of teachers were just feeling a lot of pressure. Um, short, we had a short uh, lunch period. Um, kids had a lot of downtime, probably too much downtime last year. And uh, this year we've changed that. And from what I've talked to amongst staff and students about just the slight changes in time, everyone seems much more relaxed, much happier compared to last year. You know, last year we're still kind of in the pandemic. We weren't sure if we we're going to be in school or not from one week to the other. But uh, with the extended lunch period and being a little more uh, comfortable in a block schedule and being more um, efficient with our, our non-classroom time, uh, I think people are feeling better about it this year. So it'll be interesting to see uh, how people are looking uh, in, towards the end of the spring semester. Um, in which I'll have both staff and students at that point. Questions from the board? Okay. Um, seeing none. Thank you, Mr. Berkeley. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I have something to say. All right. Gilson Middle School, Mr. Rod Morrison. Thank you. I think Mr. Berkeley took all my time, so thanks. <laughs> That's not how this works. <laughs> Darn. Uh, it's been very busy at the middle school. A lot of, lot of good things are happening, even though it's been raining every day. The rain's starting to get a little old. Uh, Mr. Uh, Bauer attended our trip to McCarthy, and I did hear he had the worst footwear on the trip. Um, he did assist uh, with changing a tire or watching kids while a tire was being changed. A spike actually went through a tire. I've never seen a picture like that where uh, we've got the spike at school or we'll make some sort of trophy with it. So have a little fun with that. Um, uh, this week, I'm going to start tomorrow. We've got kayaking with seventh grade. Um, the boys kayak on Tuesday, the girls on Thursday. We're hoping for a good day, but it might be going to get wet probably. School pictures are Wednesday. We've got reading buddies started uh, up again, which is our middle school kids. Truck down the elementary school with Miss Mayor and then do some reading with some younger kids. So we're excited to get back to that. Uh, cross country wraps up this week, and I had a typo in the dates I sent out. I said they were traveling the 15th and 16th. Stocks rose the 16th and 17th. They leave Friday and come back on Saturday. It's their last trip of the season. Uh, what a tough group they have been in. Uh, since we started our season mid August, they've had a day and a half of sunshine. They're not, uh, they were running a mineral creek today and they finally had to turn around and come back because there's so much water running down the road that it was, uh, they're slopping through it. But they've, they've uh, 
you get the toughness award this year. Uh, middle school basketball starts uh, next week. Middle school basketball and cheers. We roll from one season right into another. Um, we have been doing Character Strong, which is a uh, social and emotional learning um, uh, curriculum we bought once a week on Wednesdays. That's gone, you know, been well received with students. Um, other than that, uh, do you have any questions for me? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. All right, Herman Hutchins Elementary Report, Mr. Jason Weber. Feels weird going last, but I'll do it. <laughs> um, uh, a lot of stuff going on at the elementary school. Um, we're, uh, you know, ended the year with a lot of field trips last year, and I told the staff right at the beginning of the year, let's try and spread them out because in field trips are really high interest activities for elementary schools and. Um, they accepted the challenge and they've already been up, uh, fifth graders up at Thompson Pass and uh, our second grade's already been to the museum. So and there's uh, several other ones they're, they're working on planning. So um, it's good to see our, our kids out and around the community. Um, Tracy um, Gilson has started roping rams up again in the elementary school, which is a lot of fun. And um, it's always fun to watch them do their performance at the end of October. So um, that's been going, She's, the night was her second night with the girls mostly girls there's a couple of guys involved but uh it, it's really fun i jumped in there and jump roped with them on thursday a little bit and realized that i'm out of shape mm -hmm. um our school theme's been really fun um several teachers have risen to the challenge and um, third grade i would say is probably out in the lead a little bit they have a scuba diver going down the hallway somehow um and so it's pretty neat um and the school theme is something that goes on throughout the year, so it, it only gets better and more interesting as the year goes on. Um, our Boohoo Yahoo breakfast with our kindergarten parents uh, went really well. It was nice to just do it again. Um, you know, I have all the parents together after they dropped off their kindergartners and, you know, have donuts and stuff. And one of those things that we hadn't been able to do for a couple of years with COVID. So it was nice just to be able to do it and not have to plan for anything odd. Um, we had a last minute a UAF drone presentation for our fourth and fifth graders. Um, and I'm working on uh, possibly partnering with them, doing a little bit of work. Uh, they've, I think Sean had started it uh, when he was superintendent and then that thing happened. Um, but when um, they came in, they, they've worked with some other schools up north and they develop like a two week unit that's really place-based science education. Um, they like to incorporate drones. And so what they wanna do is, um, work with the schools here to make a two week unit. Um, I think they kind of focus on maybe doing something with uh, Robe Lake or something as the place, but uh, I don't know that anything else has been decided beyond that, but they like to use drones to um, kind of generate one student interest, but two, it's, it's, a, it's a technology that they believe um, could be further advanced in Alaska uh, considering our geography and stuff. So um, part of the, the grant that they have, I, I don't want to, say who who I don't, I don't remember um but the organization that they got the endowments was one of the science science endowments but um they we would uh, actually get us a, a classroom set of drones that the teachers could use then with their class so really there's we, we're really out of nothing so um sometimes i'm really wary of doing stuff uh, sometimes with it because then it's it's all this work that they want my teachers and myself and like that and it, was, and it really wasn't it was more them creating things and giving I was like, okay. But um, the kids had a lot of fun. They were able to do a drone simulation um, with, with them. They were able to, they had this big giant one that was you know, several, like a lot of money drone. Um, they were able to help kind of take it apart, put it back together and um, work with some of the other smaller drones. So it was the same group that was doing the uh, drone petting zoo up at the Civic Center. Um, uh, Mr. McCombie's not here to talk about the Nugget, the social emotional help dog um, that the police department got, but um, he's been a real success um, at the elementary school so far. I think we're just scratching the surface of what, what can be done. Uh, mostly it's been a lot of introduction, uh, but the, the, the animal is well received um, by the kids. And so Mr. McCombie's brought the dog by at least four or five times now and kind of in the morning walking the kids to class, being out in the commons with them. And it's, I think it's just created a positive way for one, um, Mr. McCombie to interact with the kids being a police officer in uniform, kind of breaking down that barrier real easily. But at the same time, I know um, 
other other teachers and staff members have talked about, you know, doing some reading buddies for the you know, and different things to kind of help generate uh, interest and academic activities that we're doing in school as well, um, as well as being there when um, the child's having a difficult time. It, it does help. So, um, academics, our first round of MAPS testing is complete. So that one's in the books. And this fall one really, I mean, we did them in the spring. So, but the fall one really does give us a baseline to look at um, any regression that may or may not have happened over the summer um, and help with our final planning for especially new kids that have moved into the district. Um, teachers well, completed in-service training on ELA curriculum materials earlier. And then of course we were in service on Friday um, and um, both in-services went well. Um, Friday's was a little bit wonky because there was all this rain that was coming down and everyone was worried if they were gonna be able to get to their destination at the end of the day. Um, and then the year's off to a great start. The, I think really it kind of social emotionally in the building are kind of coinciding with each other really well this year, having that new flooring and just kind of down the middle of the building. I think really the kids feel really good about the place they're at and really kind of happy to be there. Um, I think that just, it just makes it more comfortable. Um, so um, I want to thank you guys as well for materials for the library. Um, I can't remember how many kids have come up with this. is so nice. I can't wait to go to the library and just, just feel good in there. Um, and so that's been um, really nice. And it's, it's, it's a small thing, but it's really, I think, a big thing for the kids. I think what um, all these little projects did is just show how much the, um, the school board and the city care about the kids. Um, and I think that was well received by uh, the kids. And I know the staff and parents have made a lot of really positive comments about um, those pieces of the school. Um, so it's nice to have that all come together this year. So, um, any other questions for me? For Member Winchester? Uh, yeah, I'd like uh, if you have any updates on the music program, especially the after the bell activities. After the bell activities, I, you know, we have really, I don't have access to many things because in the negotiated agreement, the only thing in there is Legos robotics. Um, after the bells program, I put a, um, informational thing to ask staff members if they're interested in doing activities after the bell. And there's a variety of different things, but currently I don't have anybody interested in doing music or choir right now after the bell. Okay. Um, I feel like if we didn't have a basketball coach, we would have figured it out. <laughs> this is not a small thing. This is the feeder program for the middle school and the high school. And if kids don't start now, our entire music program is gone. Nobody and, wants to learn the flute in sixth grade. Yeah. Uh, my <laughs> suggestion would be to look at kind of working with the uh, AFT because it, it looks like this is something that would be really logical to be in the negotiated agreement because we do have those things in there for middle school and high school. We, we don't currently have that position. So I'm kind of left with, you know, traditionally we haven't advertised a lot of those federal program positions because um, we don't have like a set music position for federal programs. And that's generally the funds that we've been using to hire after the bell tutors and stuff. And so I'm left with, you know, I can't advertise out to the community and maybe find someone out there right now. So I'll work with Mr. Bauer, of course, um, and we can, of course, look at other options and how we can get there. But right now I just don't, um, I've, I've put it out and I haven't got any feedback. Yet. Okay, well, yeah, we haven't seen it. Like you said, you haven't been able to post it, but it's priority. Superintendent Mauer. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Board Member Winchester, the, my understanding is there's not really, there's not a line item where, where something like a basketball coach where it's slotted every year for the elementary. I think it's just been done because the person who previously did that just did it, where it wasn't. We don't have any funds allocated for it or mandated in where then we get into line items that don't exist. So we're, it would be creating something. And it, if it existed in the past, it was out of the kindness of someone's or generosity of their time. So it, we're, we're talking about board action to create something. Uh, board member Todd and board member Winchester. I like the second one to what Jamie said that this is, to me, is part of the curriculum. When we moved it out of the school day and into the after, after the bell program, I had no idea that it wasn't being paid for. Um, good for Leslie, thank you, thank you, thank you. But, but 
if that isn't part of the curriculum, we basically have to change what we do at the middle school. And we will change what we do at the high school. And we basically, in my opinion, you don't start learning an instrument when you're in fourth and fifth grade, when you don't have basketball every day after school competing with that, you won't have a music program at all. And so to, to change the whole music pro program around without giving the school board a chance to say, hey, yes, we'll pay for that. Um, uh, it's, you know, it's unconscionable to, to just destroy instrumental music in the whole district. Um, uh, I, I, we just need to get somebody. I happen to know somebody who would like that job. And so it's too bad that we didn't just take the bull by the horns and advertise for it earlier in the year, but I hope we can fix that quickly. Yeah, they're, they're currently, you know, we have music class within the school day. Every kid's exposed to it. There, there are instruments. There's, you know, as far as a full-fledged band, that's, that's a whole other thing. Um, but, they're um, playing musical instruments in, in, uh, during the school day? Yeah, we have musical instruments that they play as part of the curriculum. Remember Winchester? Um, I guess I just want to reiterate that we, <laughs> I, just, I feel like I'm just repeating myself over and over, but we've had this discussion and it came up you know, during when we were looking at the handbooks. You know, this is not an optional program. I don't see it as an optional program and we need to figure it out whether, you know, I'm seeing, we're hiring three new people on this meeting, <laughs> but I still don't have a music program. Right. right. I, I think this would be something that would be easily put on a future agenda to, for discussion. Okay. So I'm hearing that perhaps for next meeting, we will work on board tools to get you essentially an added duty position of some sort. If the board decides that they want to pass that and fund it, then we can go from there. Sounds good to me. Any other questions for Mr. Weber? Thank you, Mr. Oh, Weber. Thank you. Right, we are moving into the approval of consent agenda items. And the consent agenda includes personal action report, first reading of board, Policy 3513.3. This, this all is together, yeah, unless we take them out. Um, also included are the second reading of board policies 0100 philosophy, 4021 drug alcohol testing for school bus drivers, 4117.2 resignation, 4119.12 harassment, 4122 student teachers. 4158-4258-4358 employee security and 4161.7 civic leave. These are all second readings. Also on the consent agenda is budget amendment 23-1, which is the end of the consent agenda. Do we need a motion? No. Does anyone want to pull anything? Just ask a question about one. We have to pull it we too. Have to pull it. Okay. You can, you can pull it. You need to make a motion first. Okay. Uh, who wants to I move to approve the consent agenda? Second. All right. Voting on the consent agenda. Four yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. All right. Moving into new business. First item in new business is to. Approve the environmental sensor technology purchase, not to exceed $21,350. This will be presented by Director Melissa Reese. Entertain. We need, we need a motion before we talk about it, yes? Move to approve. Second. Thank you. Director Reese. Melissa Reese, Director of Technology Innovation. So this is um, a proposal to ask for funding for environmental sensors. I can speak to the technological aspect of it, and I would invite the superintendent and building principals to, to speak to the need for these technologies. Okay. We're looking at different environmental um, sensors here, and you'll see that there's, we're still in the, the process of looking at them. We've got two different types listed there. There's a few different options that we have been considering. The wired cameras in this proposal would have the potential of connecting to current cameras. 
in the building. And so if we put these wireless sensors in all the restrooms, then we would have opportunity to put cameras right outside the restrooms so that if the sensors um, sensed chemicals from like vape or smoke, then it would activate the cameras right outside of the restroom so that, and then the building principals would, would, would receive an alert that the sensor had sensed some, some vape or some other chemical and it would activate that camera. So then building principals would be able to immediately identify whoever was coming and going from those restrooms after the, the sensor had, had alerted them. And this proposal here is just for the sensors, not for additional cameras, but just kind of explaining the difference why there's, there's two different types of sensors there. The other sensor that's listed there are, are wireless sensors. They would connect to the network on our wireless technologies, and they do not interact directly with any of the, the current cameras. We looked at two different ones because like in the middle school, that construction, the ceilings are, like if you look above yourselves there, it, it's hard ceilings. And so running cables and installing, you know, at devices after the construction, it, it'll be more complicated. And then in the high school, it's more, they've got drop ceilings. So it's not that big a deal to run cables in the high school. And so this proposal, looking at those two different ones, looking for approval of, Funding for up to the most expensive one would mean that would be the most we would spend, but we would still get due, due diligence and get more quotes and things like that. But Mr. Bauer wanted this to come to this, this board meeting to, to get approval to move forward with some more research on, on the sensors. Uh, so yeah, let's let uh, Superintendent Bauer and potentially principals present the need and then we'll open it up. Thank you very much, uh, Superintendent Bauer. Uh, I, oh, that's just sounds like I was thanking myself. I am Superintendent Bauer. <laughs> uh, so the justification for moving forward with this is uh, working in collaboration with the police department. Is we're trying to, it's, the impetus was, wow, at what point do we report all of these crimes? And do if, if we're dealing with vape uh, violations many times a day, then it goes back to what I, mentioned in our report where we're, we're, our building administrators are spending so much time outside of being educational leaders. Um, Colony High School was mentioned as um, one that has already implemented these, that said the, the brand name that they um, installed is Halo. And they, so I called and spoke to the administrators there. Um, the feedback was they were having the same vape situations with the same complaints that we have, the same concerns that and the health concerns for the students. Um, and they got many alerts right away. And then it was just none. And uh, they they work in collaboration with the local police department, like we're doing with um, what, what are the consequences that and there's educational components to it. Also, it's not just a crackdown, you're, you're in trouble or suspended. It's, or it's uh, there are educational components that they implemented that we're planning to implement as well in working in collaboration with the city. Uh, the, the, the motivation that I have for this is one, to, 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 to just get back to learning in schools and not addressing. So it's the, the concern of well, won't they just do it somewhere else? Um, in my conversations with the colony, who's had these implemented, um, if they are, they're not doing it on campus. Like there's, they're, they're not, there's not reports of kids you know, doing it in the library or anything. So um, it really has the fear of those sensors or or the awareness of the sensors rather is more appropriate. It has really um, seriously mitigated or eliminated the use of vaping in the school buildings. So, uh, any questions? Board member Todd? Maybe this belongs to Melissa, but do they just sense vaping? Are they doing cigarettes and vaping? Are they, I, uh, I don't know what these sensors oh, sense. Thank you. <laughs> They're environmental sensors that um, sense a lot of things. Like if we went forward with this, I might put them in the server room to, to, to keep the temperature. And then they would alert me if the server room went above a certain temperature. So yes, they, they sense vape chemicals and they sense smoke and they sense um, other things as well, like temperature. And I'm sorry, I don't have the whole complete list of all the things, but they are environmental sensors, including vape and cigarette smoke. I guess, you know, I, I want to know, you know, 
it, that, it's kind of vague to say environmental sa sensors. Is mm -hmm. it? Oh no, there's four people in the bathroom, and there's only supposed to be three. Uh, you know, or how many? How many? Uh, I'd love to know how many false alarms Colony got. Uh, and um, you know, is it is it worth it? Um, I will say that this is probably more money than a music teacher. <laughs> Well, it sounds like they sense airborne sorts of things a lot, you know, whether it be temperature or particles and chemicals in the air. I don't know that they're it's sensing body count, but um, <laughs> there's this false alarm. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I, I don't have that information. I'm sorry. Superintendent Bauer. Thank you very much. I, I did ask that very soon question to Colony Heights, and they said no, they, they were legitimate a lot of alerts to to vaping cartridges or from various whatever chemicals that vapes uh indicate but then it's in silence so they're not getting false alarms that in exist this the in fact they had a pretty heavy um dose of alerts when they first implemented them and then it uh, once the word got out that there were sensors in the buildings, it stopped. And the only time they showed up is when they had visiting teams for athletics staying in the buildings. So um, that was so there were no in reports of any false. Thank you. Further questions? Okay. Well, thank you very much. Um, so I understand the need. I, I, I have heard that, that the load's been heavy on the administrators with the vaping. Um, in researching the these things, it seemed I, I wonder if the knowledge of those sensors being there has has deterred the number, or if kids are just a little more crafty. Um, there are ways to bypass them that are pretty simple um, from from reading them. So I'm I'd be curious about that. But I'm I'm more interested in what we do after we find out if whoever is doing the vaping, like what are we doing to educate them to help them to. It seems like. This is one tool, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, but I feel like what happens after that, um, I'm, I'm more interested in, in hearing what we, we intend to do there to help those kids. Superintendent Bauer. So, thank you. We had, a, um, thank, we had a couple of meetings with about these police department, the Chief Hinkle, and they are updating their uh, stats or ordinance rather um, in the same way that we have updated ours this meeting but um, it's an educational component where they have uh, whatever the deferred or adjudication a juvenile court is that what we call it youth court, youth court thank you uh, the youth court where the the penalty for lack of better would be educational mandated education courses and the second offense is a, a mandated financial penalty where there's a fee because it, it would be a crime to and, and we would have those implemented Prior to any offense, we would uh, implement education courses so students are aware of it. So we're not waiting until they're big to educate them on it. For reference, I would imagine it's the city of Palmer that Colony is in. Their municipal fine is five hundred dollars. We don't have that on the books necessarily, but that might be playing into. Well, and I guess, I guess that part doesn't. That even doesn't matter. Like I, whatever. The consequences are mine is more of what are our counselors doing are they working with parents with kids to help the kids not i don't really care what we find them i don't you know i think if, if there's more to it than that um so i guess i'd be curious to see what we intend to do on on that part of it more so than consequences or sensors and those kinds of things thank you Board member Todd. we do have a policy that that has progressive penalties for smoking and I would assume that this would be very similar and maybe the policy committee should re review that policy right now to make sure you know like the next policy uh, committee meeting to make sure that we like those uh, what we've already got on the books further comments before we go to the public Okay, we can open this agenda item. Thank you, Dr. Reese. Um, to public comment, if there's any public comment on the topic. <coughs> yes, Mr. Rod Morrison. 
Bob Morrison, middle school principal. Um, you know, when I was in school, it was way easier because there's a little painted box outside that they send everybody that smoked. Everybody would go out there and students and staff, that's where they would light up at. Um, we haven't had, uh, in my 20 years, 21 years in Valdez, we've dealt with some smoking, we've dealt with some marijuana. Vape has hit us pretty hard. Uh, I had sixth graders last year with vape devices. Um, and the accessibility to kids is if there's a supply coming from somewhere, uh, we've talked to the local stores, they've quit carrying vape products because they were having product problems in our schools. The first day of school, I had a vape incident. And that same day, I got a call from the teen center that some elementary kids were approached by high school, middle school kids with vape material. So it's, it's, it's real. Um, the, the dangers in vape, and I've done a lot of research for about a year now, um, you don't know who's in it. And it could be, uh, it could, it, it could be very bad. There is an educational component in the new policy that I forwarded to Mr. Bauer um, because education has to be a big piece of it. If you're on my email list, you've seen blast from me last year about vape, and this year about vape. Mr. McCombie was working on a, the, um, a vape curriculum educational piece that, that included kids teaching kids about vape. Sometimes they listen to kids a little better than they do us, but uh, um, the issue with vape is it's, it's a cigarette smoke or a marijuana you could smell for a while. Vape, it might smell like a strawberry or a mango, and it's gone. Uh, we had uh, reports in vaping on buses last year. Um, it's, uh, it is a big deal in Valdez for, for our youth, so that's, that's my plea. Further board or further comment? Yes, Mr. John Berkeley. Um, you know, I would echo everything that Mr. Morrison said. Um, you know, to me, the, the the price of doing nothing far exceeds the cost of the of trying these pieces of equipment. From what we gather, vaping is far more prevalent than even what we think we see, uh, and it's it's a rather insidious product. Um, you know, I've I've found little vape pens that. You know, they make vapes that look like Sharpie markers. Um, I'm sure I've had my hands on a few vape uh, items and didn't even know it. Uh, I found them in bags of chips. Uh, and so these kids are putting these into their lungs. Uh, and if you come into the high school on any given day, they go into the stalls. It gets into our air handlers and it gets pushed out to the rest of us. You can smell it. Uh, and so it's, to me, it's an epidemic. It's a huge problem. Uh, I think it's bigger than what we think it is. Um, and it's very, very difficult to, to catch somebody doing it. Uh, and from my experience, I, I've been a part of a district that was a recipient of the statewide tobacco cessation program grant. Um, education is part of it, uh, but if I think if, if you don't start moving into a, a punitive area, they just sit through the classes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They just nod their head yes, wait till their time's up, and then they go back to doing what they've done. Um, you know, back in those days, the cigarette smoke, the pot smoke, it would hang in the bathroom for 45 minutes. That's not the case with vape. Um, you know, we know it's out there. We know it's being used quite a bit. Uh, and the kids that have been caught, they're all different kinds of kids. And so it's not just a certain type or a certain group of kids. Uh, I think a lot of our, our students are either experimenting with it or using it on a regular basis. And so that's why Mr. Morrison and I have been pretty, uh, pretty vocal to Mr. Bauer. Um, about vape sensors. We've been talking about this for a while uh, because uh, we, you know, we may not catch every single one. Um, really, the goal is try to keep a, a healthy environment, learning environment for all our kids. Uh, but with, with vape, it's very difficult. Uh, it just, you can't smell it on them after a short amount of time. The tools that are used to to take in the vape are very small, very easily hidden. Really, you know, the vape centers, if anything, give us a cleaner environment. 
cleaner learning environment for the rest of us. We can do other things with education. We can bring people in to present and educate kids on possible, possible health risks. Uh, we can do things to educate parents, but it, it, it seems like some days that's all we do is we're trying to trace down you know, where the vape come from. Um, and so it's just one incident can take half a day to figure out. And um, with a vape center, if it's a deterrent, at, at the very least, that's a place to start, I think. So uh, I, I'm in support of, of the sensors. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Berkeley. Any further public comment? Can you just circle back, board? Why not? Any further board discussion? I would just say shortly that it's not often, I think, that two of our three building principals come up asking for a tool that they really feel strongly will help them continue instruction. So um, I would recognize that. There's no further comments. Let's vote. Four yeas, zero nays, motion passes. All right, so moving to item number two in new business, approved budget amendment 23-2 in the amount of $21,350 funded by the undesignated reserve. And that is in direct response to item one. So moved. Second. Any board discussion? Public comment. Okay, let's vote. Four yeas, zero nays, motion passes. Moving on to item number three in new business, approve one general education paraprofessional position in Valdez High School, Gilson Middle School, and Herman Hutchins Elementary. To be clear, that is one in each building. Um, that is not just one total. That would be three total. So um, motion. So moved, except. No exceptions, only so moved. Okay, well. At, at first. Um, we can I, I, okay, I, I would like to, to say I move that we um, approve three paraprofessionals. I think that is the way the move, you see the recommended action. That's that right, three paraprofessionals as opposed to one per building. Yes, yes. Necessarily. That's, that's, that's right. Move. Second. Okay, Superintendent Bauer. Thank you very much. So sticking with the theme here of... <laughs> Focusing on the goals, one of the conflicts that we that, have, that we're really facing this year with uh, sub shortages and uh, just come on, is our special education paraprofessionals who are, have designated funds for through special education are being pulled uh, or or volunteering how whatever for whatever reason are being uh, assigned duties outside of their their scope of helping the student in special education. Um, sometimes out of just sheer necessity and shortage of staff, uh, the, the just or rationale behind this proposal is to put one or hire three people, that, one per building for simplicity, but, but and please take note where it says uh, with district-wide avail availability on the assignments. So these are essentially district-wide paraprofessionals uh, in pick three for average of one per building, but if there is a need for, to say, coaching staff or in the high school are out and we have a serious shortage of subs, they, we can assign them for that day or those days to the high school and move them as, as needed. That would be in the job description. Um, and to fill it with, uh, to, uh, to take on responsibilities that we don't have just pair, general paraprofessionals for at the time. In each building as needed. So it's just a to not uh, misappropriate funds by taking special education funds and using it for general education purposes. It's, this is a one year proposal to try out basically. Uh, the financial impact is at the bottom of the proposal um, with our, uh, our kindergarten teacher that was availability. We've already been budgeted for certain roughly $120,000 for that teacher. The three paraprofessionals would 
cost about $60,000 in addition to that. I do want to point out that um, if, if these people were to sub every day, I mean, it's weird justification, but if three people subbed every day without benefits for, for 150 days, we're looking at roughly $60,000. So um, it's the, for the additional budgeted funds, um, it's not a huge impact for one year, but I think it's worth our while in this crisis that we're in with shortage of subs uh, and the, the need for extra personnel in the district. Um, it's a justification. If, if any questions happen here. Questions and comments from the board? Board member Todd? Just for a historical note, we had uh, uh, permanent subs uh, hired one year and we decided not to do that again. Um, I'm in favor of this uh, as opposed to that because they're designated as paraprofessionals and so they're as opposed to subs. And so hopefully if we don't need them, we can use them for you know this big class or that class is running a project that needs more hands to make it uh, safe to do something exciting. Uh, uh, this kid needs more help with whatever that is not really special ed. Um, it, I think it's nice to have the the um, flexibility of being in different buildings and be, and I hope somebody stays right on top of that and make sure that these people are are uh, fully employed. Um, it does cost more than having subs, but if we don't have any subs, uh, we've we've seen what happens that we don't get music and and uh, it, principals doing what principals are supposed to be doing and all that sort of stuff. So I think for right now, it's a good idea. Further comments and questions. Thank you. Are thinking about it? We need more processing time. That's <laughs> processing. Um, board member Winchester. I like the idea of having additional help. Um, I think the management of these will be the key. And having set tasks, I mean, this is kind of handing a building, here's a human. But I expect pretty solid accounting of what they're doing with their time, we're going to go forward with this because it's real easy for this human to, you know, go off down a rabbit hole that really might not have been what we wanted them for. Absolutely. Um, thank you very much for that comment. We did discuss that in, in our administrative meetings. And one of the things that we're really focusing on the job description is to be clear that these they will go where needed. So um, my my concern is exactly what you just shared with um, hey, where how do we know what these people are doing on a day-to-day -day basis? So that's the, in the where they report to every day, and the district office will know where they're at every day because oftentimes we get like you know, I get a call from one principal. So it would be uh, for I get a call for a principal for a need in the building that we can't fill. So it's it's uh, there would be strong accountability and awareness of where these people are at. And certainly as we develop a clear job description, which we can do this week, um, I just want to make sure we move forward with it. I'll share with the board and it will have those channels identified for accountability. Oh yeah, I would echo that, that it will need to be clear who is their direct report, right? Who, who does their evaluation, who, assigns them to said duties and ma is managing all of the requests, whether it's yourself or if there's somebody else, maybe it's Shannon, whoever it is in district office that's kind of got the broad scope of the calendaring so that, yeah, all the needs are met. Further comments before we open it to the public? Okay, public comment on this topic. Seeing none, we will vote. Four yeas, zero nays, motion passes. All right, moving into the fourth item in new business, approve the MOA with Angela Alfaro, MD, as school physician. We'll entertain a motion. Move to approve. Second. Are you presenting? Do we have any presentation for this? No, the 
Do we need any? I'm not sure. No, the, the MOA is in the pack, I believe, and yep. we received a signed MOA. Um, Let me see that. Board comments or questions. I imagine there might be some considering the history. Dr. Todd? Um, I'm wondering whether the motion needs to include a maximum, well, or, or maybe it should be noted that in the contract there's a maximum amount. I asked Amber today for the history of that because I was remembering that it was 8,000. We didn't go back that far to see what it originally was. Um, so correct me if I'm wrong, Amber, but it was one year that it was 16,000. And then more recently, it's been 2,500 and 6,100. Is that right? Um, the the duties here um, are myriad. I, I know when we did this at the beginning, uh, I'll just be the historian here. The beginning, uh, we had a new mandate to do a concussion protocol, and setting that up was going to be, you know, a lot of a lot of stuff to do. And my what I pictured was that once you set that up, then it didn't take quite so much to keep it going. There's a lot of paperwork to be done, um, and. Uh, I personally, as a citizen, would like to see this kind of revert to um, what we had before we had a school physician, which is that the um, that the fire department um, came to a lot of the football games in particular, but also to the basketball games when there was huge numbers of people. Um, they liked being there. Uh, they were very visible to the populace as saying, this is what, you know, our, our guys have time to do that. And they could respond to a fire just as fast uh, from the high school as they could from the uh, from the fire station. They're really not that far apart. And uh, gave them some visibility to the community. They were available. And uh, we really aren't very far from the... Anyway, I, I'm not sure that this is the best way to, to spend our, our money. And if we do it, I would say that maybe we could put a different limit on it instead of 15,000 uh, and go back to a previous limit. Um, I am going to I ask you guys to recuse me from this, however, because uh, I have offered some of these services in the past for free. Dr. Todd, we cannot recuse you unless we table this for, we would not have a quorum to vote on that. Well, let me decide. Um, the board member Winchester. Um, I Kind of echoing Kathy, we're now in our third year having a school nurse as well that we were told was a one year deal. Um, and it feels like she's been taking on a lot of the concussion protocol herself. And like Kathy said, historically, this position was to get the concussion protocol in place. And we had other community ways to take care of these things. I know it's fantastic to have her there and people really appreciate it. But uh, is this really something we as a district still need to be spending $120 an hour on? My own opinion, for what it's worth, um, football season, as far as games go, were canceled this year due to a variety of injuries or some sort. Uh, they're still practicing, but she never went to the practices that I know of. Did she? Okay, so, so that's going to be less of its expense at the outset of the school year. Um, I tend to lean toward, you know, having a school nurse does, I think, relieve us of some medical concerns that we might have, particularly with establishing new procedures and protocols. Though, to depend upon the fire department, I like that idea, but that's a partnership that needs to be renewed, um, and they're under different leadership. I mean, they may not, new leadership may not be in pro of that, so. There's but, a push and a pull there, you know, right. if we don't have a need, then. Yeah. That's right. Um, so our options are, after public comment, of course, we can take a vote. We can table it if you would like further thinking time or if we need to discuss with the fire department if, if we'd rather see if they're thinking about attending basketball games of some sort if we're concerned, but um, those are our options. Think about that or I'll take public comment. Any public comment on the topic? That was not a lot of thinking time. Seeing none. <laughs> Any further discussion from the board? 
Board Member Winchester. Uh, with, I don't see any other further discussion. Um, I moved to postpone just because I want Kathy to feel comfortable and yeah, give everybody else a chance to think about it and weigh in at the next meeting. I don't think this is, so if we don't have any urgent games happening. in the next couple of weeks, I move to postpone until the next board meeting. Second. Uh, voting on the motion to postpone. Four yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. All right. So item number four is postponed until next meeting, tabled, whatever the term is. All right. Um, we. We'll have an executive session later, but for now, board business from the floor. We'll start with Dr. Todd. Uh, we've already discussed a couple of my concerns, Dan being one of them. Um, I um, want to make sure that on our uh, on our list of work sessions that we put ELOP program. Um, I, I don't know if that's already on the list or not, but I'd like to do that. I think there's. Uh, I've been hearing from few parents that uh, they're being told things about the program that I'm not sure are absolutely true or if that's why the program's looking you need to weigh in on that so I want to do that sooner than I've been later the other thing that uh, concerns me um, on a fairly urgent basis is that I heard this body I thought that as this body said we were going to recommend what the state uh you know, health state health department was going to recommend concerning COVID. What I hear about the high school, and I'm sorry, I didn't have time to uh, to ask what's going on in the other two schools, is that um, there's one person in the building wearing a mask, period. Um, and um, I was I was hoping that we could have a um, a culture in the high school that would make it possible for people who are supposed to be wearing masks because of recommendations or who wanted to wear masks because of who they had at home or what their own health was was like, uh, could wear a mask. And people who didn't want to wear a mask didn't have to wear a mask. Um, there, I do not believe that there is no one in the high school that has been exposed to COVID. I do not believe that there's no one in the high school who has had COVID and is still within 10 days of when they caught it. So I think there probably should be some people at the high school who are wearing a mask um, because of their exposures or because of their uh, of their own disease. And as I say, I think there's probably, I would, I would be having my child, if my child was in the high school, I would be asking them to wear a mask so that we wouldn't have to wear a mask at home so that I can still go to work the next day. And um, if my child, you know, I, I don't think that, that my kid could take it if they were going to be the only one to wear a mask. Um, I just really wish that we were doing what the school board decided that we would do rather than, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm willing to be outvoted, but I'm not willing to be outflanked. Um, and so I, I hope that we can reconsider um, what, we're, what we're trying to do in the schools, make it possible for everybody to stay as safe as they can without mandating things that, uh, maybe are, are overkill at this point in the pandemic, but the pandemic's not over. Um, and uh, I wish that we could do what we said we were gonna do. Thank you, Board Clerk Wade. I just had a couple things. I uh, was lucky enough to go with the eighth graders on their field trip to Kennecott McCarthy last, last week, and it was amazing. And that staff is phenomenal. Um, Anybody who has the opportunity to go should should try to be involved in that. And I also wanted to congratulate our uh, girls volleyball team for uh, taking first at their their tournament this weekend. That was pretty pretty fun. And I have to say, I haven't been at the elementary school, so I can't say there. But I I have to say at the at the middle school and the high school, both the the energy, um, yeah, and the school spirit in the gym. It was great to see all the people there and to feel that energy. Um, you know, we had. All the other schools were rooting against Valdez, and and our our community showed up and mm -hmm. and supported our kids, and it was fun. So, um, just happy to see that again. Thanks. Thank you, uh, Board Treasurer Winchester. 
well, you got to go to McCarthy, but I got to go to the Valdez Museum with the second graders. <laughs> Equally as cool. It was a blast. <laughs> we walked in the rain because, you know, it's Valdez and that's what we do. Yeah. But we're I'm happy to have those going on. It's really nice not to have everything in the last two weeks of school because that was pretty intense. <laughs> so I know they're looking forward to going to the fire station Wednesday. So it's cool to have things out and about and seeing our community a little better with the kids. Right, for myself, um, I wanted to share this. So the first day of school, I saw on Twitter um, that the Valley's high school laptops had already rolled out to their students on the first day of school. And so I asked my third grader and my first grader, do you need your iPads today? And they said, yeah. And I have to commend not the technology department and everybody embedded in the schools that made that happen. That, for what it's worth, is not the norm in K-12. That is, I mean, when I was a teacher, if I got my students their Chromebooks in the first month, I was a happy camper. I mean, for the first day of school, for the students to have the tools that they need and the teachers can begin on day one with whatever they want to start on those devices if they want to, that's a gift um, instructionally. And I want to say thank you. And I know that that is no small feat. That's a lot of planning. So thank you to everyone who was involved with that. Um, I wanted to remind, and I guess I will hear again when I read out upcoming dates, but that open forum on September 14th, that's this Wednesday, 7.30 in the high school library, I believe. Um, that's for anyone in the community to come out and talk with Superintendent Bauer, give suggestions, ask questions, just meet and greet, whatever you want it to be. So I um, recommend attendance there. Uh, for myself, I will be um, attending the Boardsmanship Academy in Fairbanks this weekend. So I'll send a report into the next board packet about that. And then I also have my quarterly assessment advisory panel meeting with Deed on this Wednesday. So I will also submit a report on what I hear from Deed concerning our state assessments. Um, that is it for me. So let's look at what is next, our upcoming dates. Oh, that's right. Yep. And that will be in the list as soon as I find it in this very long board hack of ours. Information items. Thank you. <laughs> um, we have the August check warrants. Feel free to review those at your leisure. And then I've already mentioned the Let's Chat open forum, the Boardsmanship Academy coming, and you're right. Um, Board member Todd, there's a substitute training and recruitment upcoming on September 17th. That is also in the high school library from 9 a.m. to 4.30. And if community members are interested in becoming subs, do they need to register? Or register while they're there. You can register while you're there. So just show up, 9 o'clock in the morning, high school library. Uh, future meeting dates upcoming, the policy review committee will be meeting September 19th. Um, there aren't board members on there, but that is also open to the public. So if you have a, if you want to listen in or um, come watch policy review, feel free, 6 to 7 p.m. September 19th. And that's in the superintendent's office. Thank you. That does not say that here. Um, also, our next board meeting is on the 26th. We will have a work session before that board meeting. I'm I believe it's most likely the topic will be on facilities um, with Nate Duvall from the city coming to speak with us. And with that, we will um, I'll entertain a motion to go into executive session under subject matter one matters, the immediate knowledge of which would clearly have an adverse effect on the finances of the district. So moved. Second. Okay. We will go into executive session now. Thank you, everyone, for coming and those who are yeah, listening. Oh, we need to vote. Yes, please, let's vote. Let's do this by the book. Where's my voting tool? I say yay. Four yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Thank you.